This video is brought to you by DistroKid. Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. So you've started a few songs and you're feeling pretty confident, but you might have run across a SoundCloud comment or YouTube comment saying, Woo woo! Hello! You're not a real producer unless you make your own sounds from scratch. And you don't really think about it, but a few days later you're working on another song and the little voice in the back of your head's like, Oh my gosh, is that person right? Panic starts to set in. If I keep using presets, does that not mean I'm a real producer? Don't you worry. I'm here to help. If you want to learn the most powerful yet basic tools of sound design, then keep on watching. Because by the end of this video, you'll be on your way to making your own sounds. Now, just as a little aside, this is a bit of a thick video. So if you want to learn a certain topic, I've put all of the timestamps in the description. But I recommend just watching the whole way through since everything kind of leads into one another. Now, my preferred synth to do all my sound design is Serum because it literally does everything. But since you've been spending your hard-earned dollars on awesome resources like my Patreon, today we're going to use Vital so you can follow along for free. If you're completely new, I'm going to go over these basics. And if you already know how synths like Serum and Vital work, you can skip to here. And over there, I'll show you how to make basses, chords, plucks, and a few of my favorite sound design tricks. But instead of blindly telling you which knobs to turn, let's go over more or less what everything in the synth does. Starting off with basic shapes, aka the only waveforms you'll ever need. Yes, even for dubstep. Every synth sound you've ever heard is made up of these four waveforms. The basic shapes. In most synths, including Vital, your sound design journey starts in these oscillators. Inside these oscillators, you load in wavetables that are the source of your sound. And inside the wavetables, you can move them around to shape the sound. By clicking 2D and 3D, you can get a visual of that. Is that you, Space Laces? But going back to basic shapes, in Vital, there is literally a wavetable called Basic Shapes. And as you cycle through the waveforms, it goes through each one. Starting from most simple to complex, we have sine, triangle, square, and saw. As these shapes get more complex, more harmonics are added, leading to richer, fuller sound. You can see it through this little graph here. You can see the amount of harmonics being added as I cycle through. And just like I said earlier, these will be the building blocks of any sound. Now, starting with the most simple, sine wave. It looks like this, kind of curvy. This shape is great for sub basses since it works as the fundamental of your sound without harmonics. Good way to think about it is that little spike there matches up to a musical note. So as you can see, it only has the one fundamental, meaning it's clean AF. Next, we've got the triangle. Looks like we shaved all the curves off the sign and that gives us a sound that's a bit sharper. Get it? And you can see that in the added harmonics. Next, we have the square. And you can see that's got even, whoa, even more harmonics. And if we go low, it gets real buzzy. So it's great for leads. And finally, we have saw wave. And this kind of looks like a triangle, but don't get it confused because this one has the most harmonics. You can see that they cluster up real good at the top there. Here's another view. Ooh, so many. Stack these, and you have future bass. <laughs> just kidding. So what we have here are the basic sounds. And using just these sounds, you can make competent music. If you don't believe me, listen to iconic songs like... Back then, game consoles could only produce the simplest of sounds, so composers had to work around it. But listen to this, they were able to make all of these iconic tunes. This means sound design is more about learning what sounds go together, rather than overcomplicating how to make one single sound. 
But this ain't 1984 anymore. You can't just play the 8-bit version of a song at a festival. No, these days we have the ability to add depth and complexity to these basic sounds. And what's the easiest way to do that? Additive and subtractive synthesis. This is something you can do in any synth. Basically, anytime you add another waveform to another, like this, using unison, the sound changes. And this change is additive. Inversely, when you add stuff like filters or adjust the envelopes, you're subtracting from that original waveform. The sound, once again, changes. This change is subtractive. By combining and mixing and matching different forms of additive and subtractive synthesis, you can take a sound from a boring little saw to a huge super saw stack. This leads us to one of the first things we can change. I mentioned it earlier, and it's a form of additive synthesis called unison. This will add wideness and richness to the initial basic shape. For example, let's use this saw wave. Unison stacks multiple versions or voices of the same sounds, which means you don't have to stack the layers so much in Ableton. I don't know what gave you that idea, stack the layer. but it doesn't help because it's all built in here. As I add more unison, you can probably hear it's not quite wide or thick because stacking these waves is not enough. <laughs> Hi. Hello, it's me, Brayden. I'm a frequent poster on the popular wheat-based electronic music forum, Breddit. And to solve this, you need to slightly take each wave and put it off tune. Hey, yeah, you're right. So in order to do that, uh, uh, mm, shut up, Mr. YouTuber. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna make 12 instances of vital and adjust the, the fine knob. Actually, no. There's this percentage here, which is called the detune. In uh, Serum, it's an actual knob, but in vital, it is this section of the synth here. And the detune does this for us. I swear these online forums are gonna be the death of learning music production. Anyway, the more this goes up, the more each wave gets detuned. That's why they call it detune. But with all these voices getting added, fixed, and if you turn the detune up a lot, just be careful by turning detune up all the way because then it'll actually be out of tune. You just want to slightly tune. But as I was saying, as we add more and more stuff to it, things can get muddy. So let's do some subtractive synthesis to clean up the sound. The first kind I'll show you is filters. And it's exactly how it sounds. It filters your original sound. Think of it the same way as an EQ cutting or boosting certain frequencies. Filters will do the same thing. To affect the sound, you can select a type using this slider. This one goes from low pass to high pass. A common one is low pass, which is this slider to the left, which cuts all the highs, as you can see here, and lets all the lows pass through. They're really good at naming these synths, aren't they? Now here's what that sounds like on the sound. As you turn this bottom slider, which is the cutoff, you decide how much highs you cut off. See how the names of everything kind of line up with what they do? They were really thinking when they come up with this, let me tell ya. On the opposite end, we have high pass. Cutting all the low sounds, letting only the high sounds pass through. But if you're like Brayden and ask why just not use an EQ, it's cause synths like Serum and Vital have filters that'll do more than just hot sounds. You have stuff like these formants, combs, and phasers. Set phaser to stun. <laughs> As you add by subtracting, sometimes a sound might go on for too long or you might hear some weird clicking sounds cause stuff is overlapping a bit too much. And to solve that, you can use another subtractive strategy. Uh, if you're really smart like me, because <laughs> in Ableton, if you go into turn on the automation mode, you can automate the track volume just over. No, 
envelopes or ADSR. That stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. By default, the easiest way to think of this is a volume shaper, but it can also be used to control literally anything else. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. For now, just know it controls how loud and quiet your overall sound is based on when you push down a note or release it from your keyboard or your piano. It's honestly what Braden was suggesting, but instead of messing up your mix by automating the volume slider in Ableton, you can use envelopes for this. Now, if what I'm talking about is a little bit confusing, don't worry, because Vital shows it through this little triangle shape. If we want to put it as simple as possible, it literally controls whether or not something is a pluck versus more of a pad. If we're going to dive into detail, the knobs that affect the sound the most are attack and release. Long attacks make the volume slowly come up, as you heard there, versus short plucky ones. And if you give a long release, when you let go of the note, the sound will ring out for the length of time that you set. And you can see that just over See the little dot move as well as a visual aid for where your sound is. Decay is if you want a slight change right after the attack or you pushing the note. And that leads into the sustain. Wherever the sustain's volume is, that's where the volume will stay as you hold down the note. So if it's up here, you'll see it's louder and quieter. And I'm holding down. And now you know the four major things that will help you create sounds. The majority of popular sounds can be made with different combinations of oscillator, unison, filter, and envelope. And I did mention that you can use the envelope to control anything. The, what does that mean? Keep watching to find out. But before we get to that, I'd like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you've been on this channel, you know that DistroKid is the best way to release your music to streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music. And along with having awesome music, it's important to also have recognizable and consistent branding as an artist. If you're looking to stick out from other independent artists, a great way to do that is to have a YouTube channel dedicated to your music. In the past, if you uploaded independently to all stores, including YouTube Music, you get like three different channels with your artist name. But with DistroKid's claim feature, you can consolidate them all into one. Now you're probably asking, Ash, how doggone am I going to do that? Well, it's real easy. You just got to make sure you have a channel dedicated to your content as an artist and that this channel has artist content uploaded to it. If not, you can create one, name it after your artist name, but if you apply for a blank new channel, it might take a little bit longer. Next, you want to make sure you have at least one release that has selected YouTube Music as a streaming service on DistroKid. And inside the goodies menu, you'll find YouTube Official Artist Channel. All you got to do is select your artist name, authenticate it into your YouTube channel, and you're done. Now you can customize this channel and make it fit your style and brand and on top of that you get all of YouTube's amazing discoverability features including visibility through search, artist specific tools through the YouTube studio, data and analytics, and that lovely little music note by your name. This is all included with your DistroKid subscription which is only $20 a year but if you sign up using my VIP link you get 7% off your first year. And as always thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring today. Because of you I am able to keep making these types of videos. Having said that, let's move on to the next section. LFO is low frequency oscillator, and that's a term for another oscillator similar to these, but they just move at a low frequency. Jeez, me trying to explain this really feels like I'm just trying to hit the word count on an essay. From what we've gone over, the easiest way to think about it is like a looping envelope. It adds movement and automation to anything on the synth. So a good example is to assign the LFO onto our filter. And we can do that to, let's say, the cutoff here. And by changing this frequency, you can set how often the LFO loops.
So maybe you're designing a sound and you're turning random knobs and you're like, damn son, that sounds cool. I should automate it. Instead of doing that in Ableton or FL's automation settings, it can all be done inside Vital. Plus you can assign LFO1 to multiple knobs. Do amazing effect. Not really, not here. Or multiple LFOs to one knob. Do you see the amount of possibilities and activities you can do? Once again, not to get confusing, but you can assign the envelope to anything that you assign the LFO tool. So we can make envelope two and put it to the filter. But as you can see, it only does it once instead of looping. But also on an LFO, you can actually change it to envelope mode. So it just does what envelope does. What I'm saying is LFOs can do what envelopes can do, but envelopes can't do what LFOs can do. Just like all rhythm is dubstep, but not all dubstep is rhythm. Jeez, really hitting the word count now. Now, if you've gotten this far and you're thinking, Ash, this sounds raw and dry. Don't sweat it because Vital has a solution for that too. And that is the effects tab. Woo, let's go, woo, effects tab, oh. This is where you can spice up your sound with stuff like chorus, reverb, distortion. The effects are mostly self-explanatory, but some of my favorites are distortion for leads, hyperdimension, which is serum only, unfortunately, but you can also achieve the same types of effects with chorus. The multiband compressor gives you a built-in OTT and you could even do another filter if you want to filter out even more sounds after all of the effects you just added. A good use of this is a simple low pass filter assigned to envelope one to match the volume of the synth. This keeps it tight. Are we still here, friends? If you are, congratulations. You now know not just the basics of Vital, but most of the other synths that are out there. By mixing, matching, combining these different sections, we can create all sorts of sounds. Having said that, let's try some of these techniques out and make some of our own. And the best sound is when you click the like, subscribe. Now I said this earlier, but when getting into sound design, newer producers tend to fall into the trap of how do I make this one specific sound? And you need to stop doing that. The more important thing to learn is which sounds go together, which sounds complement each other. The amount of future bass songs that I'm hearing with just stacks and stacks of super saws without even a bass in it just goes to show that you're obsessed with looking for the one sound and not thinking of what sounds build into the overall song pro tip you need a mid bass what i'm saying is once you know that then you can go and ask what sound is this or how do i make this sound or maybe you already figured that out and that's why you're on this video anyway I could explain this stuff all day, but I already did in this video, but it's easier to understand if we just start making some sounds. I'm gonna go over some common ones and the fundamentals I use for beginners to make it. So let's start with a simple bass. But starting at basic shapes, let's choose a saw wave. And let's lower it a few octaves. By holding shift and dragging this pitch section here, you can go down by octave. If you don't hold shift, it goes down by semitone. So holding shift, let's go down one octave. Let's stack some of these voices a little with unison. And turn the detune down to thicken it up. Next, using what we learned from additive synthesis, we can add another layer for texture. I'm turning on sampler here. And this can be used as a noise oscillator. It's a little harsh, so now we subtract by turning down the level. And we can also use filter for this too. Turn on filter and keep it to analog 24. And we're gonna leave this slider all the way to the left to make it a low pass. Don't forget to send sampler through the filter. So this goes here. We can also set to dirty and turn drive up for some more crunch. I like what that cutoff is doing. We'll come back to that in a second. Set voices to one and turn on mono and glide. Mm -hmm. 
just adjusting the noise oscillator here until it sounds good. From here, you've got a really versatile Reese bass, but let's experiment a little. Maybe add another oscillator, not forgetting to send it to the filter as well. Also just playing around with the detune, adjusting the level, and I like the cutoff again. Maybe trying out some different wavetables. Opening up the filter here so I can actually hear the wavetables and cycling through it a little. I like that. Dang, that's cool. And these little changes can go a long way. But I like this progression. So I wrote some chords around it. And with chords, you don't have to go too crazy with it. Simple is better. Going back to basic shapes or initial preset, I'm just gonna use the unison to stack some voices. Using Detune and it sounds very similar to a super song. Same thing that we did before, we can take an LFO. Once again, subtractive synthesis. Let's just put it on level to give it some volume movement. Now just repeat this chord progression throughout the whole song and send it to my feedback stream because that's my favorite thing ever! You can use effects to add some reverb. And maybe some EQ. We can cut some of these lows out. Hearing that with our original bass. If you don't like the gated super saw sound, get rid of that. Turn the volume back up and let's try some different envelopes. Make the attack longer so that the synth comes in a little slower. Like that. So it swells a little bit. We can go back to basic shapes. Maybe pick a sine wave or a triangle. And now we're a little bit more mellow. Maybe subtract a bit more with the filter. And use envelope on the cutoff to give it the same amount of swell inside the filter. and maybe not even that much detune. Keep the reverb and EQ, maybe a bit of distortion. As you continue to make changes and hear things that you like, you can save the preset, use them in future songs. And if you've watched any other sound design videos on YouTube, you'll probably hear that it's better to separate sound design sessions from your writing. This way you don't need to have a specific context for what sound you're looking for. And you can focus on just experimenting. But you know, everybody's different. That might not be your style. And the more you practice trying to just make sounds, the easier it'll be for you to come up with sounds on the spot when you're in the middle of a beat battle, I mean songwriting session. That's kind of cool, I wrote us a little pluck thing as well. I'm gonna start with that same patch that we were working on and bring in what I wrote because it's pretty much perfect for that. Using what we know about envelopes, make a sharper envelope using the cutoff, just like we did in the other synth. So making envelope two look like this and then dragging it over to our cutoff. Adjusting cutoff to make it more plucky. Now if we want to make a pad, it's the same kind of thing. It's literally just in the envelope here. And I just make envelope one look like this. Change it back to a saw wave, add some voices. And turn the filter down a bit. Go into effects tab, pump up that reverb. And then bring our filter up. I'm gonna add another oscillator, put it an octave up, and I want something whistly, so let's pick a sine wave. I gotta like this, so I made some drums and I wanna try something a little heavier. I'm gonna duplicate this bass here so that I can play around with this and see if I can come up with something cool. I'm gonna go back to basic shapes like this and let's do sine waves. Keep the pitches around there and we're gonna turn their voices down to one because I don't want too many sine waves to be crushing on top of one another. And let's use one of these knobs. This is the warp knob. It's another form of additive synthesis. And I'm gonna go and turn on FM oscillator two. 
Now that's kind of cool there. Now here's another trick you can do to add even more transient to your bass. You can go into a third envelope, make it look like this, where you go into matrix, pick envelope three. So go global and tune. As you turn this up, you can hear kind of a little kick. I'm going to turn off the filter so you can hear it a bit better. So you can hear that really subtle transient being added to the bass. And I'm also going to experiment a little bit too. I'm going to turn the pitch up on this here. And turn down the level. So the coolest sounds come from when I turn the FM oscillator. So I'm going to put an LFO on it. And let's just put it on the FM oscillator. See how that sounds like. And you can drag a little circle to adjust how intense the LFO is. And as you can see in Matrix, it shows up there as well. Oh, I like that. And we can put that on the cutoff as well. Let's try making this sound even crazier. Why don't we try FMing from different wavetables? So that harmonic series is really cool. Oh yeah! As you turn knobs, listen to what you're doing. And if you like how something is sounding, just add another LFO or envelope on it. You can even spread some of these octaves here. And as I mentioned earlier, turning down the level so it doesn't get too crazy. And let's throw some effects on it. I like distortion. It's a little harsh. I'm gonna turn the, the cutoff down a bit. Maybe uh, another filter. Just to tighten it up. Chorus to widen it. But don't take these as rules. It's your life, do what you want. And I found I like doing my processing after I make the synth anyway. So I like to keep the vital patch simple. And let me show you some of my favorite Ableton post-processing techniques. I like to do these especially for bass heavy music. I always put the wombo combo on. And so this is a combination of reduce ambience, OTT and saturator, turning up saturator to give it some thickness. I like using double overdrive to dial in a tone, especially if I want something distorted, but still having body in the mid range. Taking that, duplicating that. And automating frequency shifter can make bleeps go bloop. Sometimes I like to use vocoder to combine one sound with another. Adding a delay on these settings gives you really metallic sounds. And another delay on these settings makes it wide. And there's probably even more, but it all comes down to experimentation. Don't know what a spectral resonator does? Try putting it on your sound. Try some of the different presets. Look up how to use the plugin on Ableton's website or try to find a video on it. Maybe I should start making videos on individual plugins. Would you even like that? Just let me know in the comments below. But if you've been watching this and you're thinking, damn, sound design is kind of overwhelming at the end of the day, it shouldn't be complicated. Just because you don't know 100% how a certain thing works doesn't mean you can't make cool stuff with it. It's all about experimentation. The amount of cool sounds I've made just by turning knobs and hoping for the best is way more than the ones I actually set out to make from scratch. Guaranteed, most of your favorite producers have found their sound by just messing around as well. When Skrillex came up with the scary monster's growls because he was just moving an EQ around, 90% of Porter Robin Robinson's music comes from presets, but nobody's calling him out saying that the lead from Divinity is just from a contact library. No. 
he's inspired so many people. So even though you sat through this entire sound design tutorial, don't think of it as required learning. After all, making music should be fun. It should allow you to express yourself. And if you find that form of expression in the process of sound design, then keep at it. But don't let some 12 year old commenting on YouTube keep you from your potential because the lead you used in your latest track just happens to come from a Cymatics pack that you illegally downloaded. You'll be fine. Just like if you like, subscribe, and comment on the video if it helped you today. Now this took a while for me to make, so if you've made it this far, I believe you're ready. Now go make some bangers.